And now, another timely and powerful message from Pastor Emmanuel Williams and Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee. Well, let's take a look at the word of authority, which is our scripture verse. And let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to be reading from verses 24 through 30. All right. So this is where our lesson will be taken from. Let's give it a chance for us to make sure that we are all in the same book at the same time. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And another parable put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. Right? This is a parable now. Verse 25 says, double click, go to verse 25. But when men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. Verse 26 says, But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servant of the household, householder came and said unto him, Sir, this is now not thou sowest good seed in thy field? From whence hen hath it tears? Where did these tears come from? He said unto them, verse 28, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, With thou then that we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather them up the tears, you root also the wheat with them. The last verse says, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them, my God. But gather the wheat unto my barn. Amen. Now, this is a particular parable that I know that many of us are familiar with. Many of us are familiar with this. But I just want to let us know that God's plan for redemption is still vibrant even on today. Right? The end times has always been on the heart of God. Always been. So he spoke about the end times a lot during his teaching to, his, to the, um, the, the people during that time. Right? This particular parable is something that is to come, but we have an ability to do something about this parable right now. Right? To prepare ourselves for eternity. Well, Jesus spoke several parables on this particular day. Within this chapter, though, as the book is divided by chapters, we have four particular parables that were spoken about. And here we are going to look at this particular parable, which is the parable of the tears. Everybody say the tears. Amen. Now, you may ask yourself, what is a parable? And we, it's very important that we understand what a parable is. Right? A parable is a story of a natural story. Something we can all relate to, right? But it has a very specific spiritual meaning. Do not miss the spiritual context of what the parable has to offer. There's so much within this parable that we can pull from. But there's a few things I want to highlight on today, all right? Within this particular parable, we are looking at a current event. Something that's happening right now, right? Verses 24 to 27 tells us what's happening right now, right? And uh, there is a future event that shall come that we'll also look at, which is the harvest, the end times, which is very important to God. What, hence why he taught about it so often, right? So whoever has here to hear today, please let them hear. Hallelujah. In this particular parable, we have a few characters that we'll take a look at, right? So it's very important that we identify who this character is, these characters are, right? We had the sower, which is Jesus Christ. The son of man. We have the good seed, which are the children of God. Those who have accepted the word of God and now are in the body of Christ. We have the tears, which are the children of the wicked one. Some Bible verses say weeds, right? But we have tears, which are the children of the wicked one. Then we have the enemy who came forth and sowed as well. Who is he? He's the devil. We have the reapers and the servants who are the angels. And all of this is taking place in this particular scene. It's taking place in the field. This field represents the world. All right? And we all are in the world, aren't we? And this is all leading up to a particular event that shall come to pass. A future event that shall come. 
We, should, we can't escape this event that was gonna, it's coming. It's the harvest, the end time, the fullness of time. We can't escape this. It shall come. Now, let me preface this by saying also that many of us have, many people have already seen the end times. What do I mean by that? They're no longer with us. So we don't know when our particular end time may be. So let's keep that in mind. Let's not think about this as yea on yonder when the rapture does occur and Jesus Christ cracks the sky and he does come back. Yes, that shall happen as well. But don't forget that while we are here on this earth, it's appointed to each and every one of us, every man to die. Right? So many of our brothers and sisters, family members, loved ones, many people have already seen their end times. Right? Prayerfully, those who have already seen their end times, many have already accepted Christ before they departed, which is great. But unfortunately, there are some who died or separated from this earth as tears. Right? So let's keep that in mind. Let's keep things in, in context. All right? So prior to this particular parable, Jesus spoke, up, spoke about a parable that talks about the sower. And he talks about the word of God being sown. And we've heard about the different hearts that the word of God fell on. Right? Stony ground, thorny ground, and all these different type of grounds. Right? From verse, 20, from verse 3 to 24. But here Jesus Christ is developing on this word. He's developing on this. Our apostle recently taught at a conference that we went to, a few of us went to that conference with him, it talked about examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith, right? So this morning, I want us to examine ourselves, right? Are we prepared for the harvest? Are we prepared for the end times? Are we prepared for our specific end time? All right. Let's look at my first exhibit. I want to break this down real quickly. So verse 24, I'm not sure if you could all see that real clearly. Verse 24 through 27, and let me read it again to bring things in context. It says that another parable he put forth. It says, the kingdom of God is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in this field. Now, if you can see right there, I have the word likened underlined. Likened simply means to be like, to compare to, to be resembled. So heaven is resembling what we're going to talk about here this morning, right? This is what it's likened unto, right? So to say the son of man sows good seeds and those seeds are now the wheat, right? The wheat are those who choose to acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Anybody here wheat? Hallelujah. All right, I see you all. Y'all ready for the fast, I see. All right, whole food. Glory to God. So it says that he planted good seed. He sows good seed. Now, before he was talking about the word. Now, let's, let's make sure we understand where we're going with this. Now, what are seeds? What is the seed of God? His word. His word. Right? So he spoke about the seed. He gave the parable about the seed. Right? And here is now developing on that seed. Now, that seed, if it's planted into your heart, now you should bring forth fruit. And this particular fruit that he's referring to is now in context of this parable are wheat. So if you receive the word of God, then you are just wheat. Amen? All right. Want to make sure we are following. All right. So it says also that it is his field. Right? And we're going to take a look at that in a minute. And then now we have, while this was happening... Someone came along, the enemy came along, and they planted the tears among the weed, right? Now, we know that the tears, these are weeds, right? Those belonging to the evil one. John chapter 8, verse 44 tells us who these people are. Those are the children of the devil. Their devil is a spiritual father of those in this world, right? Who oppose God. They choose to oppose God. They rebel against God, all right? So, but these are not any regular type of weeds. These are not any, you know, weeds by themselves, they are pretty annoying. I'm not sure if anybody does farming or gardening. They're, they're very annoying, all right? Hard to get rid of. Always popping up. They even pop up out of concrete. You wonder how this happened. But they're determined, though, to do what their assignments are, all right? And that's to cause destruction, all right? But this particular weed is called Darnell. Now, a darnel is a poisonous weed. It's grown in the area of Palestine, they, they said, right? But it resembles the wheat, right? 
in many ways, it resembles wheat. It's like a false Christian. Let me bring it home to us. Right? A fruitless person living without faith from God and therefore is all show and no go. Right? Again, we are examining ourselves. All right. Making sure that we are identifying as who we are. Wheat. All right? All right. Good. Good. All right. So these weeds comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Now, they come to kill, steal, and destroy what particular? The wheat. The assignment is to kill and steal and destroy the wheat. And we know according to John 10, 10, who that is. That's the devil. All right. So again, they're the children of the devil. All right. So an immature wheat is very similar to a weed. Sorry, immature wheat is very similar to a weed, right? But their difference is in their fruit. Now look at what the verse says. It says that they only identify them by their fruit. When the fruit was sprung forth in verse 27, that's how they were able to identify what was wheat and what was the tires, the tears, right? Hence why the servant came and asked God, but hold on, didn't you only plant good seed? Then where comes these wheat among, these tears among the wheat, right? So you have to spring up those fruit. The Bible says that we shall know them by our Amen. Now, make sure you're looking across your neighbor. Make sure you have some good fruit sitting beside you. Amen. <laughs> all right, we even go into the grocery stores today. And we see all these different type of fruits. We see the grapes. We see the watermelon. We see the, um, the oranges. Right? How do you tell which is seed or seedless? I saw Pastor Cheryl um, post something last week, I believe. Someone was selling some watermelon somewhere. And she had to identify specifically that these are seeded watermelons. Right? I, don't, I came to America now. I'm wondering how you have seedless fruits as a little man from the country in Jamaica. What, what's, what's the special thing about seedless and seeded fruits? But I realize that some people are so lazy. All right, let me, let me move on. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to offend anybody. All right? So the only way that we can know the fruit is by opening it up. We have to do some in examination. Who we are. We are fruit examiners. Right? But someone planted some tears among those fruit that we have that are seedless. <laughs> so that's the only way that we're going to be able to identify if it's tears or wheat within that particular time frame, right? Because they both resemble and look like each other. See, we're in the world, but we are not. So there should be some difference in the way that we conduct ourselves. Our lifestyle should be different. The way that we speak should be different. Right? Our faith should be different. Right? As our apostle came this morning and he delivered such a wonderful word of prophecy, which I took personally for me. Lay all your burdens down. The Bible didn't say that we're not going to have troubles. We're not going to face ills or, or all these different tribulations. Right? But there's a way that we respond. Right? If we are wheat. All right? All right. Very good. So let's look at the weeds, the tears, sorry. Ephesians chapter 2, let's go there real quickly. Ephesians chapter 2, these are who the we are, the children of the devil. It says, we are in time past, we walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the ear. The spirit of that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation. That word conversation simply means our lifestyles, all right? In times past, say in times past, shouldn't be in present time if we're wheat. In times past, that we lust after our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and the mind. Whatever came to our mind, we just did it. Once it felt good, we just did whatever, right? That's who we once were, but these are the tears. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love within, he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, we are saved. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the grace of Jesus Christ. We are saved. Now, our second exhibit, let's look at his response in verse 28 to 30. He says here that 
He said unto to them, these are the, the servants who came and asked him, should we go ahead and take them up, Lord? He says, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. An enemy has done this. So he said, with thou, with thou then we go and gather them up. But he said, nay, 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 uh-uh, hold on. Don't, don't worry about that. Hold on one second. Lest we gather them, the tears, we uproot the, um, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them. Very sad case. Very sad case. But gather the wheat unto my barn. Notice it's his barn. Right? Again, Jesus spoke several parables within this one particular chapter. Several parables on that one day. In this particular chap uh, chapter, we looked at four. There's four parables there. The sower, the tears, the mustard seed, the, the parable of the leaven. Right? So now he's developing on this because the disciples were very curious about this particular parable. They came back and said, Lord, explain what does this mean? They didn't ask him about, they didn't, they didn't ask him about any of the other parables, but this particular one that dealt with the end times. So he, he unpacked this for them, verse 20, 36 through 43, which I won't go there, but that's where he unpacks all of this for them. Right? As the wheat and the tears are growing together, I'm not sure if you, again, if you, anybody has done any farming or, 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 or gardening, when the wheat and the weeds are growing together, it's very hard to uproot one without messing with the other. Right? Very difficult. But this type of separation is, only, is beyond the ability of the, the servants. The, only God can do this particular separation. Only him can do this. So he said, no, let, let everything stay for right now. Say God is in control. He's still in control. God is telling us not to take things into our own hands. Right? There's this harvest that's coming. And this is when he will separate the wheat from the tears. Right? This is a future event that we can do something about right now. Every one of us could do something about this particular future event to come. First, we got to examine ourselves. We have to first examine ourselves. Say, examine myself. Say, examine myself. Right? But we also have a further ability to do something. Because none of us sitting here today who said that we are wheat came to Christ without somebody. 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 Are you somebody to somebody? Are you being somebody to somebody? Now, we are all being engrafted into the body of Christ. I'm not sure if you understand what the, the process of engrafting is. Right? But for a sower or for a farmer, you break off a piece and you neatly put it together with the other. Right? So then it can start bearing and resembling that same plant. Right? So we all were engrafted into the body of Christ. So that's why we can now call him Abba, Father. So we can all do something about this particular end time prophecy. See, God's will is for none of us to perish. Let's look at chapter, um, um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. God is not in any rush of root the tears right now. He's given the tears a chance to become wheat. That's his goodness. That's his mercy. It says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He promises to burn them. Right? He's not slack. That he's not wavering about what he's going to do, if, he's, if he could do it or not. No. But he is long-suffering. Say long-suffering. Long-suffering. Right? Thank God for his long-suffering towards me. He was so patient with me. The first time I heard about Jesus Christ, I did not automatically put my hand up and surrender and say, here I am, Lord. No. I did not automatically say, here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I'm longing to see your... No, no, no. I wasn't... Uh-uh. I wasn't like that. Longing to see what? I wanted to do my own thing. 
Why ever felt good to me? As long as I'm not going to get locked up in prison, which a couple of them I could have, but by the grace of God, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, I'm still here. Right? But by his long suffering towards us. Hallelujah. That not willing for none of us to perish. That perish is the same burning that he's talking about. The same bundle that would be brought up and put into the fire. He doesn't want any of us to perish. He doesn't want any one of us to get into that fire. The fire is already, gonna be, is already prepared. There's no doubt about that. And again, I mentioned earlier on that some of us are already made to the end times. Our harvest already made. Because we made up in our, in our minds why we were living, why we had breath in our lungs. We didn't give it to God, unfortunately. So some are indeed lining up for that burning. Amen? Very sad case. But this word here, all, should come to repentance. Changing your mind. Changing your, um, the, the way that you, 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 you see God. Changing the way that you, do, you live your life. Changing your nature from darkness into his marvelous light. All right? This is not in the Bible, but this is what's from me, reading and studying the scripture. One such relationship that is currently knitted and twined together. But will be separated when the right time come is marriage. See, some persons are married to unbeliever. Right? They're knitted together. They're joined together as one. It's so unique that when God teaches in his word, he has never con considered our children as one with us. The only relationship God considers one with is when you get married. That's the only relationship. Your children, as close as they came out of your loins, they're not considered one. Only in marriage. And unfortunately, sometimes we're married to the... And let me not say that. But nonetheless, there is a, a separation that will happen at that particular time again. If I'm looking at the rapture, one will be taken up. One will be left. All right? Unfortunately. But that's, don't, don't tell anybody I'm going to go divorce right now. No, don't, don't say I did that. Not, not based upon what I said. No, no. Don't do that. Stay there and engraft that unbelieving spouse. All right? <laughs> That's what the word says. Live your lifestyle so that that person hunger and thirsts after the righteousness of Jesus Christ and become saved. Oh, my God. Now, all this is happening for one particular reason, which I want to spend most of my time on this morning. I'm not sure how much time I have left, but I want to spend some time on this right here. Let's go to my third exhibit. All of this happened because men slept. Verse 25. Men slept. This is why all of this has happened. Now, who are the men? Who are men? Human beings. Mankind. Both male and female. But let me drive it home and knock on our doors. The church. Yeah. Yeah. While we slept, the enemy came in, and this is what the enemy did while we were sleeping. He was able to sow tears among the wheat. Among the good seed, he was able to now come in and infiltrate and planted tears among us. Stifling poisonous plants, hard to get rid of, very annoying to his core. He did this. Now he says, we slept. Now, it could mean, and it does mean, literally and figuratively, sleep, lifeless, seemingly dead. That's what the church is today. We are seemingly dead. We are falling asleep. No longer are we alert. No longer are we effectively evangelizing as we should. We're not even living witnesses what do i mean by a living i'm not talking about going out there being a witness going out there being a uh, being a witness or witnessing should be your lifestyle automatically wherever you show up wherever you go you should be a living witness they should be able to look at that person and say that person is healthy that's good seed right there that's some wheat right there you look weedy Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you look mighty weedy today. Look at you healthy, weedy. <laughs> Amen. We're not evangelizing as we should. 
We're not aggressively promoting the kingdom of God. We are asleep. I should have told you what my, my topic was today. It's tears among sweet. Wake up. We need to wake up. Because all this took place because the church was asleep. When you're asleep, you're unconscious. That's, it's a miracle why we get up each day and we, we tend not to realize that we could have drifted off into our harvests, into our last days. Not many woke up. It's a miracle within itself while we are here. Not because of any alarm that went off. Not because of your body clock. Your body is used to waking up at this time. Uh-uh. Only by the grace of God while we are here. While we drifted out of that sleep, dead state and are here today. To do what? What are we here for? If you've given yourself away, if your life is not your own, what are we doing? When was the last time you sat with someone and encouraged them to change your life around? Where was the last time you sat down to sharpen a brother or sister? How open are you to take correction? How willing are you to submit to the authority that God has placed in your life? Because many of us act like rebels. And we know who rebels are. The Bible said they are children of disobedience. And their spiritual father is the who? The devil. We don't want to be a body of Christ acting devilish. That should not be named amongst us. We should not be leaving upon, oh, that's just, I, I, I'm still in process. I'm a work in process. How long will you be a work in process? How long will that construction sign be up on the road under construction? When you've already been funded by the government. All of the debts have been paid in full. But we are yet to submit to the word of God. We are just lazy and not wanting to submit to God's word. Hence we are asleep. Dead. We can't witness to anybody. Because our lifestyle. Look just like the tears. Because we are not yet started sprungling up. And bringing forth fruit. So we look exactly like the tears. And let me not say only by the eyes. But we act as well. We speak the same way. Sometimes we even dress the same way. We go to the same places. So how are they going to tell the difference between. The Wheaties. And the tears. We need to do some examination. Again, all this happened because we were asleep. Look at your brother and sister beside you and say, wake up. Wake up. Look him in their eyes and say, wake up. Glory to God. Y'all want something to eat? <laughs> Amen. We're not evangelizing as we should. We may say, I can't evangelize. I, 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 don't, I don't know scripture like that. I, I feel intimidated when I'm in. I, I, okay. A time, a place, and a program. Have you even begun that? No word, no power. No word, no change. The only thing that can uproot the weed from the weed and separate that is the word of God. Because when that time comes, only thing he's going to do, he's going to speak. He ain't going to go down on his knees and pull it. No, he's not pulling nothing up with his hands. Only with his words. And guess what will come forth? The weeds. Guess what will be separated? The tears. Guess what will happen to the tears? They will be burned. There's no negotiating that. Right? We're too busy with the cares of this world. Our apostle came and he said this morning, lay them down. He didn't say we won't have cares. The Bible didn't tell us that. He said in this life we will have tribulation. Tribulation doesn't seem like anything fancy 
or anything that's a, a little, you know, a little sniffle, you know, uh-uh. You will have tribulation if you're living right. Only if you're living right. If you're living opposed to the systems of this world, you shall have tribulation. But God said, be of what good? Good cheer. Because he has overcome all of those already. Lay your burdens down. Bring them to him. Because he cares more about us. He wants us to live light. Why does he want us to live light? Because he wants us to be a living witness. He wants us to be a light into this world. Our lights are dim. Our lights are dim. We are no longer the lamp on the hill, which we should be burning with, right? Our lights are dim. We are like the frozen chosen. We can't even come to church and lift our hands. We can't give God a radical praise. For the radical things that he has taken us out of. All right. We're not focused. Easily distracted. Social media have its good things to, about it. Because some persons are watching us now on social media. Don't click off. But yet still. Even myself. I find my time, myself at times with this finger. Just, <laughs> think I'm playing a slot machine. Looking at people's lives. Well, I just, just call you up and talk to you or pray with you or something. Ask you how you're doing instead of zoom. Worst thing is seeing some people you're friends with on Facebook and you see them in public and you don't know, they don't know who you are. But he knows who you are. God knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly why he has created each and every one of us. The plans that he has for each and every one of us. But we are too busy just breathing in his free oxygen, doing nothing about it, asleep. Dead. In Psalms 24 verse 1, God said that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. In Psalms 115 verse 16, it says that God has given the earth unto the children of men. He has given all of this to us for us to occupy, to have authority. Did we sing about that earlier this morning? Or possibly you mentioned that this morning. The authority that we have. Is given to us by God. This is our inheritance. This is ours. This world is ours. To do what? To evangelize this earth. To make sure that those who are tears. Who we all once were. We can't throw any stones or cast any judgment. Because we all were again tears at one point. In our past conversations. Right? But we should now take dominion and authority over the earth that God has given us. And evangelize people. Help them to be children of the Most High God so that they will avoid the burning that's coming forth. Right? Avoid it. Because it is coming. We are now, instead of the tears looking like the wheat, the wheat seems to be looking like the tears. We may have been saved and in church for so long and because we are coming Sunday after Sunday, coming Wednesday after Wednesday, we may have been like the children of Israel who left Egypt, but in their hearts have turned back. So nothing is working for us. Or it could just simply be our time for that manifest manifestation has not yet come. Are we willing to hold on to God? Or are we just willing to go back to what they were feeding us in, um, in, in, in Egypt? Which we were crying out to God for already. That we don't like this. I'm tired of this lifestyle. I'm tired of going over the same thing over and over, God. I give my life the way. I give it to you. But as soon as something don't happen for you the way that you think it should happen. Back. We give up. We walk away. We don't have strong roots. Which is why Jesus Christ says, no, let them grow together. Let them grow together. Because I don't want to Get you to get involved. Because you know when we get involved, we mess stuff up. He says, no, no, don't get involved. Let them grow together. But in the right time, in the fullness of time, I will do the plucking up. And I'll say to my servants, go, put them out. Put them in the burden. 
Notice that the devil, he doesn't have a field for himself. He does not have his own vineyard. Be, be very mindful of that. He doesn't own anything. All he does is come in and try to steal. And some of us are so ignorant that we just leave the door open and say, here you go, devil. We just open it up for him to take everything that he wants. Mess our lives up. Railroad our destinies. Not having that, that fortitude to fortress our houses. Lock the doors. Bolt the windows. Stay girded up in the word of God. Until that manifestation of God comes forth. No, we are busy. Have your way. Have your way, devil. Right? God says in Ezekiel 18 verses 4, it says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Again, the soul that sinneth. Didn't say the soul that sinned. We all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But that word sinneth means those who choose to carry their own sin. Those who continue to live a lifestyle of sin. You just have no fortitude of who God is. You have nothing anchoring your life in God. So you just listen to whatever comes in your ear gate. And you just choose to do that if it feels right at the time. Those are the tears. And unfortunately, they shall burn. And they shall be separated from God forever. Dead just simply means separation. That's what death means. And again, we were all once dead in our trespasses and sin. We were all once separated from God. But by the grace of Jesus Christ, we are now in the body of Christ. Right? None of this can we do without the power of the Holy Spirit. It is difficult to evangelize without the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it. It is difficult to live a life of pleasing to God, living the word without the Holy Spirit. You can't do it. You may just be, you know, examining a few ex external characteristics of good morals. That's it. We know some very nice people. Very nice people. Not saved though. Unfortunately, will be burned. Loved ones. Family members. Very close associates. Nice, nice people. Sometimes you prefer being around them than being around the children of God. So it's hard sometimes to reconcile a Christian who is just mean all the time. Just in a constant state of meanness. Very sad. Because that word is not fulfilling them. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They're not filled with the word that changes. Hammers up those bad attitudes. Those that mean lime juice baptized in spirit. Right? We can no longer remain asleep, church. We have to wake up. The earth is crying out for the children of God to manifest. The earth is crying out for us. God is just delaying right now. That's all he's doing. He's just delaying. He's just wanting as many of us as possible to be saved. He's not slack concerning his promises. He's coming back. He is coming back. Will you be ready when he comes back? Now, before I end real quick, I just want to understand also how these tears were sown by thoughts. The Bible says, take no thought. Right? So those suggestions that comes... And you choose to grab hold of those suggestions that are not of God. You're now being bring to that level of tears. We have to learn how to use our words to cast down everything that opposes what God's word says. But if we don't have the Holy Spirit inside of us, there's nothing to, to sift through and say, oh, that's, that, that thought ain't from God. It may feel good. It may sound good. Most of the time it comes from well-eloquent speaking people. And guess what some of them are? Rich. Yeah. And because they are rich, we think that they know what they're talking about. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. You and your riches are going to be burnt the same. I'm just hoping that before you get burnt, you leave some of that to me because that's what God says. <laughs> I know exactly what to do with it. <laughs> Amen. In conclusion, y'all, God's redemption plan is still vibrant. Still vibrant. I'm hoping that this morning you've examined yourself. Are you going to remain a wheat? Look at your neighbor and say, are you still weedy? Are you still weedy? (laughs) Right? Jesus always thought about the end times. It's very important to him. Hence, that's why he came. The main purpose for him coming is for that. The end times. The commission, the great commission is still vibrant. Still necessary. And God is looking for those of us to help him in the vineyard. As much as we see the time is coming and getting darker and darker. God already told us that where there is darkness, his light, his light shall be even magnified even more during that time frame. But are we just going to sit down and not become part of that light of Christ? Are we going to be comfortable in the seats that we have and not evangelize how we should? Right? We can all do something about this parable, y'all. We can all do something about this. We can prepare ourselves by accepting the seed into our hearts. Urgently evangelizing the tears. Don't be afraid of them. Don't use your mouth to condemn them to hell, which many of us have done because we feel like we're better than people. Evangelize them. Right? Stay awake. Stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Have your intention in God's word Every single day, purposefully, not only reading the word of God, studying to show yourself approved. What are you going to show yourself approved with? Your lifestyle. Not to be studying so you could quote scriptures and tell people about this and that. No, your life should reflect the word of God. We have to spend time in the word of God so our minds can renew. If our minds renew, it's going to be from the inside out. It should be showing some fruit, right? When you evangelize and you tell somebody about God and they don't receive it, don't don't take offense with that. They're not rejecting you per se. I know my wife does door-to-door sales and it's hard for her out there knocking, especially with the heat. My God, baby, I love you. Um, And to be rejected, sometimes by some mean words. But God says, please, don't take offense. They're rejecting me, right? Matthew 10, 14 tells us what to do. You have to turn there. But he tells us exactly what to do. He says to dust your dirt off. Dust it off. And keep on moving. Just make sure that when you're doing this, you're doing it with a humble, loving heart. Sometimes we say the truth, but we don't say it in love. So as God says specifically, because you know how we are, we may think we are all pumped us and all this and that. Because we've been coming to church and we have a few titles. Right? He said, restore in love. In love. Now you may speak the truth, but any husband here would know that their wives have spoken to them some truth, but because of how it was spoken, <laughs> we are shut down <laughs> and not want to hear that. Right? So just remember that all of this shall happen. It's coming to pass. But in verse 43, it tells us that the righteous shall shine as a sun in the kingdom of their fathers. I'm looking forward to seeing every single one of us shining in our Father's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Thank you all so much. Please take time to meditate on the Word and let it sink into your heart and soul and mind today. Knowing that the Christian who meditates on the Word will be like a tree planted by the water, bringing forth fruit in its season, and prospering in all that he does. But what if you aren't a Christian today? What if you don't know if you're bound for heaven as a forgiven child of God? If that's you, then let's take care of it right now if you're ready. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Are you ready to be forgiven of your sins and washed clean and made new? Are you ready to begin your new life in Christ? Then turn to God right now and say, Lord, 
I love you. I need you. I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me and wash me clean. I receive your forgiveness right now as I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. God, please lead me and teach me and show me how to live from now on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you're looking for a good church family, you'll be welcomed with open arms at Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee, located at 4750 Capital Circle Southeast near Tram Road. Sunday school begins for all ages at 10 a.m. and the morning service begins at 11. And the Wednesday evening service begins at 7. This is a life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational church where people of all races, backgrounds, and walks of life come together to worship, to be inspired in their love for God, to develop relationships, and to be empowered to live out God's purpose for their lives. Find more information on their website, imitatorsofgodministries.com, or call the church, 850-408-8496.